step, step, pivot, step, walk, 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 right. Let's do the whole combination facing away from the mirror. From the top, a five, six, seven, eight. Welcome to tonight's episode of Signature Strong Live. My name is Matt Gardner. I'm Signature Theater's Associate Artistic Director and the host of this evening's uh, show. Tonight we have a very special show uh, about our recent sold out production of A Chorus Line. That video that played just before was made by Trevor uh, Michael Schmidt and the entire company of A Chorus Line. It was really cool to see them all come together and do that original choreography by Dennis Jones in their kitchen on the street. Um, so we were so excited to see that. We have a lot in store for you tonight, but first, very importantly, we have our specialty cocktail. This week, um, we're sharing the recipe of Zach's Grand Manhattan which we served at Ali's Bar during the run of A Chorus Line. You can see that recipe on your screen right now, uh, or you can check it out on our social media pages. Uh, the drinking word for this evening is Michael Bennett, uh, the original choreographer and director of A Chorus Line. So if we say the name Michael Bennett tonight, take a sip of your drink. Uh, we have several awesome guests throughout the evening. Um, if uh, you have any questions for them throughout, just go ahead and type that question into the comment section of Facebook and we will get around to it at some point in the evening. So let us get the ball rolling. You know, when we uh, started talking about doing a chorus line at Signature, we knew that we really wanted to reimagine it. And so we brought on this amazing team that included uh, the designers, Jason Sherwood, Sarah Cubbage, Adam Andre, Ryan Hickey, John Conflash was the music director, but the first person that I asked uh, to be a part of this new production uh, was none other than Dennis Jones. Uh, Dennis uh, was the person that I knew I wanted to help sort of imagine this new uh, choreography for the show. The show is all about Broadway dancers, so I knew I had to get the dance component just right. And so I want to welcome to our gathering this evening, uh, Mr. Dennis Jones. Dennis Jones, how's it going? Hi, good to see you, Matt. Yeah, good to see you as well. So what did, what did you first think when I asked you to do a new production of A Chorus Line with me? Well, um, I mean, to, to I would do anything with you. So, I mean, that part was great. Um, I, uh, you know, had such an incredibly positive experience at uh, Signature doing Crazy For You with you. And uh, so I would jump at the opportunity to, to tackle any musical alongside you. Um, you know, Chorus Line certainly presents, uh, you know, a, a very unique challenge, um, I, I think, to not necessarily reimagine it, but I think to kind of like personalize it and, and to create a to create a production of it that is like sort of spe that is specific to that space and for that audience. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very challenging because it's such a, a beloved piece of theater and, and that original production is something that people know and care deeply about and should. Um, it's uh, It meant a great deal to me in my life. I got my equity card doing the national tour 
of of uh, Chorus Line and uh, was in a number of productions of Chorus Line through my uh, my you know the first act of my show business career, which was that of a performer. Um, so it's a uh, you know a show that was very dear to me and certainly one that I would only want to uh, honor and celebrate in creating a new production. Yeah. Um, so thing like long answer. Thing, yeah, <laughs> something as iconic as I, I can only think of a few shows that I think the choreography is so iconic that yeah, me yeah. personally I wouldn't want to touch. Does does that scare you, or is it or is it something you don't even think of? Like anybody should be able to tackle anything. Well, you know, I mean, fear is never your friend in this biz. You know, like you, um, you, you kind of put that aside, and you have to, to, um, you know, uh, creating a new production of Course Line. Like some people may respond to it, some people may not respond to it. Like that's sort of that what what comes with that challenge, and it's something you have to. Just kind of not worry about. You want to. You want to. You want to celebrate the writer's intent. You want to celebrate what's on the page, uh, and you also want to discover it with uh, with a specific group of actors. Like we had such an incredible group of people doing this production, and you want to create something. Uh, you know, create a world in which they can be truthful and be authentic and be real people and and. Uh, and you know, breathe a, a different kind of life into a brilliant musical like a chorus line. So yeah, it's a little. It, it, it's. I had moments of terror, but I compartmentalized them and uh, <laughs> only expressed them in the privacy of my apartment in Shirlington. Was there a number in the show that you felt like really was uh, the hardest to tackle? Oh uh, well. <laughs> Yeah, I, I uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm, they're, they're all complicated in, in yeah. different ways. I mean, what's complicated or not about it is like a lot of that choreography is in the script. You know what I mean? Like the opening combination, you know, the character Zach is saying, you know, step, kick, kick, leap, kick, touch, like that's on the page. So you obviously like you have to use that as a guide. You have to create choreography that somehow connects to what he's saying. You can't just do like coffee grinder, coffee grinder, herky, herky. You know what I mean? Like it has to be some version of that so that the play makes sense. I mean, that is true for the opening number and that's very true for the one combination, uh, which repeats a number of times, many, many times in the show. So you have to be, you have to be true to what the, the authors wrote. Um, so it was certainly easier or, not easier, but like less, uh, it was less challenging to create new dance vocabulary for numbers that are not on the page. I mean, something like the, the, the Hello 12, that whole montage sequence, um, there, I, I felt a certain amount of freedom working like within that material, uh, that I was particularly joyful for me. Um, but in terms of what was like the most challenging, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say. Yeah, yeah. well, it's interesting because I, I felt like the most fun I had was, uh, and I was such a small piece of the puzzle in this uh, was putting together well, putting together as the 20, puzzle in the 20 minute what? sequence of the montage. That was so oh, okay. much. That was so much of your creation, and I was like inserting the monologues into that. But it was that was also the most exciting for me was that back and forth of pulling together that montage sequence, which which really you, I think, created such an interesting new language for the way that moved and showed the sort of growth of these characters over 20 minutes from children to adults. So we actually have a video that James is going to play right now for our audience yeah. of uh, uh, Hello 12, Hello 13. Right. Imagine me all oh, this kindergarten teacher. And I thought, shit! <laughs>
an awesome little reminder. Do you have any memories of pulling that number together, Dennis? I just, I remember that it took a long time. I mean, it's, it, it's such a, it's an epic piece of the puzzle of chorus line, the, the, the montage, which is, it's, it's so, so brilliantly written. Um, uh, and it, you know, it builds and it builds and it builds and it, it, it just like crescendos to this like incredible explosion of, of like joy and angst and frustration and, and relief. And, um, it's such a, it's such a beautifully written piece of theater. Um, but I, I, yeah, my recollection is it just, it took forever. Yeah. It took forever. We're like, Oh, it's, it just keeps on going. I know. I remember another number that took forever was the finale. And, you know, you think once they're all lined up and everybody is perfect, it seems so simple. Like it's just a tilt of the hat or a kick, but really what it took for everybody to be so together was, I mean, you watched that like a hawk uh, during rehearsals and it took so much time. Uh, yeah. Anything about that? Well, I mean, I think one of one of the things that was so exciting about doing the show at Signature was the, the size of the stage. Um, yeah was you know quite small and and by that i mean it was it was wide but it was very shallow um which had this uh, wonderful effect of kind of pushing the show right into the audience's lap i mean they they the they the audience felt right right on top of this experience in such a, a dynamic way but you know there just was not a lot of space um so when you put that many dancers on stage in a number I mean, this was true for the show throughout, but certainly for one, when they're so close to one another in that line and the whole, you know, the whole point of it is that it has to be perfect. I mean, they're auditioning for a show um, where they have to be identical. They have to, you know, the, the ensemble has to be one thing. It cannot, it is no longer a group of individuals. It is one thing statement, which means every single person has to be perfect, which means it has to be perfectly spaced, but the, 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 the cleanest version of this choreography. Um, it just has to, to, to being meticulous, I think, in creating that and then also, um, uh, you know, setting it on people and making sure that it is as perfect as it can be is why that why that number is successful. Totally. Yeah, We have a question from somebody in our Facebook audience, which actually is a member of our cast. This is from Ben Gunderson, who played Bobby. He says, Dennis, we want to know more about your experience as a performer on uh, A Chorus Line. More about my experience as a performer on uh, Chorus Line. Well, um, <laughs> I, uh, as I said, I got my equity card. I mean, this... This is hilarious. I did a tour of it. Mitzi Hamilton set this, yeah. this tour in a, a year that I will not mention. It was not recent. Um, and uh, I got my equity card and it was a tour of theaters in the round. It was like eight theaters, um, like Westbury Music Fair and Valley Forge, a, a, a number of venues that I, I'm not even sure they exist anymore, but they're all uh, theaters in the round, and she was setting the. It was the Michael Bennett. Everybody drink. Um, it was the Michael Bennett um, uh, version. Uh, the 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 version that he approved for theaters in the round. So it was official, um, yeah. but it was crazy. And I sort of feel like, in some ways, it's indicative of my whole career that I got my equity card doing chorus line, but it was a circle. Um, it just is <laughs> just kind of off about that. Um, but yeah, no, we would stand in a circle. Um, and then when anybody would talk, when any, anybody would like share their stories, we would all have to sit so that the audience could see that person. So, I mean, I just gotta say, if you wanna, if you wanna like take the tension out of a chorus line, have everybody <laughs> sit. That's that, that's the key. If you wanna, if you're interested in lowering the stakes at all, here's how you do it. Have everybody just kind of like take a load off and you know sit, sit around. Um, but it was amazing. Like Mitzi's, yeah, incredible. Um, but actually, the first production I did of it was right out of college. I did um, Bayark Lee set it. It was in Atlantic City. 
um, at a, a hotel called the Claridge Hotel Casino. They used to do uh, book musicals. I think actually Chorus Line, again, in a year that was not recent, um, was the last book musical that they did there. And we did two shows a night, six nights a week. Wow. We, and this was the full show, uncut. We would do the show. We would run to like the company mess hall or whatever, like eat a crazy amount of food. And then we just get back into our dance pants and then we would do another show six nights a week. Um, so that was the first chorus line that I did. Amazing. And then there were a couple others, but I could, I'm not going to talk all night. Oh, there you go. Well, stick around, Dennis, because I'm sure we're going to have uh, other questions for you. And right. uh, we're going to come back in a little bit. Uh, now we have a very special treat for our audience. Um, we asked these three brilliant actresses if they consider performing one of the songs from the show tonight from their home. So here are Maria, Jillian, and Kayla singing at the ballet. Daddy always thought that he married beneath him. That's what he said, that's what he said. When he proposed, he informed my mother he was probably her very last chance. And though she was 22, though she was 22, though she was 22, she married him. Life with my dad wasn't ever a picnic, more like a come as you are. When I was five, I remember my mother dug earrings out of the car. I knew that they were in hers, but it wasn't something you want to discuss. He wasn't warm, well, not to her, well, not to us. But everything was beautiful at the ballet. Graceful men left lovely girls in white. Yes, everything was beautiful at the ballet. The ballet. That's when I started class. Up a steep and very narrow stairway to the, the voice like a metronome. Up a steep and very narrow stairway. It was in paradise. It was in paradise. It was in paradise. But it was home. Mother always said I'd be very attractive when I grew up, when I grew up. Different, she said, with a special something and a very, very personal flair. And though I was eight or nine, though I was eight or nine, though I was eight or nine, I hated her. Now, different is nice, but it sure isn't pretty. Pretty is what it's about. I never met anyone who was different, who couldn't figure that out. So beautiful, I'd never live to see. But it was clear, if not to her, well then to me. That everyone is beautiful. really accept each other. I mean, I was born to save their marriage, but when my father came to pick my mother up from the hospital, he said, well, I thought this was going to help, but I guess it's not. Anyway, I did have a fantastic fantasy life. I used to dance around the living room with my arms up like this. My fantasy was that it was an Indian chief, and he'd say to me, Maggie, do you want to dance? And I'd say, Daddy, I would love to dance. Daddy. 
Thank you so much, ladies. So this production was filled with so many stars and we have two of them with us this evening. Uh, and that is Matthew Reich and Emily Tyra, who are our Zach and Cassie. Hi guys. Hi, how are you? Good, how's it going? Good. Good, 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 good. <laughs> so you, you both came into this production um, uh, after you had, you had both had a, obviously a lot of experience in doing theater um, on Broadway and and but both of you had taken a, a pretty big gap away from the theater. You'd taken some time off and were doing a lot of film and television. So what was it like coming back to things? Like Emily, what did you think when I asked you to take on the role of Cassie? Uh, well, first I was like extremely honored and excited because uh, it had been a while since I had scratched that theater itch. And um, Cassie is kind of like a dream role for any actor, singer, dancer type of person. And so um, it was definitely like a, a scary challenge, but I was excited about it. Um, and then uh, when we got into the room, I is re really started to sink in, oh my God, I haven't done this for a while. So uh, and my approach to character and my approach to um, what's written on the page is quite different for how I work on camera. So it was an interesting uh, dance to sort of like come at it from that point of view and having exercised that muscle for the past several years and then to sort of amplify it obviously not for like a Broadway sized house but the signature is so intimate which is so awesome um, but to to realize that okay I'm only being seen from this angle and we're, we're you know we're giving it to all of these you know 275 people um, live every night eight shows a week so uh it was it was a really unique and amazing challenge for me i don't know how about you matt yeah yeah, yeah was, same um i was so excited to get back on stage it had been so long um and i love love a chorus line and i've always wanted to play this part and i've done the show a couple times like in school and right out of school um um, but having like sort of gone through, uh, the business a little bit and sort of like met some people who certainly are like Zach, I was, I think I had lived enough life experience to sort of finally play this part. Um, and I was so excited to get to do it. And it was sort of like an easy first step back into the theater because I was like, I don't have to sing. So that's good. I don't have to worry about that because that's so horrifying. Um, and like the dance, like I just dance a little bit. So it was like, I was just so excited about those scenes, which like normally can be like kind of cheesy, but I think because Matt, you were at the helm, Dennis, I mean the whole team and with such a great group of actors, Emily, like it was just so nice to keep it focused and intimate and to find a whole new sort of 
texture to it that I certainly hadn't seen before. So I was excited about discovering that. Um, yeah. That was great. So actually, Matt, the last time Signature audience saw, audiences saw you was in 2010. You were in a production of the new musical Sycamore Trees, which was written by Ricky Gordon and directed by Tina Landau. Yeah. Um, and it was, I, you know, I thought it was awesome. My question is, what is, you know, you have created a lot of things in the theater. You've also done some pretty iconic roles, Pal Joey, now Zach. What is, what is the difference in taking on something that's, so iconic or creating something new? That's a good question. I think there's, um, there's so much more, f there is more freedom, a sense of freedom when you're creating something from the ground up. And certainly with something like Sycamore Trees where Tina is known for her intense rehearsal process, which I love. And she really just like spends so much time in the room and she lets you throw anything against the wall to see if it sticks. And if not, you start over and, um, I was so, again, I think I had just like known the show backwards and forwards so well and had seen so many versions of it that I felt like I was ready. I had absorbed it all, so I was finally ready to like let it all go and like start fresh while keeping like the things that I liked from the other performances that I knew. Yeah. Um, so well, it, was, it was challenging, but in a different way. What I loved about working with both of you is both of you had you know, some knowledge of the show and you, Matt, having done it, had had a significant amount of knowledge about the show, but neither of you brought any of those preconceived notions about what it should be to the room. And so it definitely felt for me like I was approaching it like a new piece of text, which was awesome. Um, Emily, did you have a favorite part about playing Cassie and a least favorite part? Uh, you know, um... <laughs> <laughs> I know that people want to hear me say that the dancing was my favorite part, but it was grueling for me. Um, <laughs> that solo that Dennis made for me was incredible and like so, it, it was like a dream to have it created on my body in my with my sensibility. Um, and I love that music. Like I, I just think it, I could hear that music eight shows a week for the rest of my life and still find things about it that are intriguing and beautiful. And um, but I found her to be such a, like a devastatingly beautiful character to live in for a little while. Yeah. Um, and that was kind of my favorite part. I felt like I had a lot of, we talked about this when I first spoke to you about playing the role, like I had a lot of truth to bring to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And sort of like excavating all those truths and bringing them into uh, this new approach to the text um, was really my favorite part. So I felt like I, I was able to find a, a new version of Cassie, but stay true to the original idea of who, who she was. I mean, obviously she's based off of a lot of real stories and um, that was my, really my favorite part was getting to wear, wear her as a person. Awesome. You know, um, you came into the process having overcome an amazing hurdle. Um, and, uh, and there, you know, uh, you had a, uh, I hope I get the term right. You had a craniotomy. Is that what it is? Right before, oh. <laughs> uh, eight months before. And there was a lot of talk about whether or not you would even be able to, to dance again. And I think you proved to everybody you could. And I'm sure our audience who knows the story is wondering how you are doing now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you. Uh, first of all, yes, it was crazy. And I still think like you're an insane person for hiring me nope. <laughs> to do it. Um, and it was, it was hard and, uh, but very much, um, a hill I wanted to climb and why I wanted to do it in this format. So publicly, I don't know, but, um, <laughs> it was, a lot of people cheering me on literally every night, which, uh, for me was incredible for my um, recovery. I am doing really well. Um, it's been really nice to be honest with you to, to rest during this very special time we're all in, um, actually really rest. And I have two months of chemotherapy left and then I'm in, I'm done with treatment for, I don't know, hopefully forever. So um, yes, yeah. I definitely, I will say doing a chorus line, and Dennis and, and Matt and Matt and everybody here on this call um, was such a huge, huge part of my uh, recovery because there was definitely that fear that I wouldn't ever, first of all, ever dance like that again. And then secondly, perform in the way that I got to do at Signature. So 
very, very grateful for that. Awesome. 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 Hey, Matt, was there um, during the show, it was you got to actually sit in the center of the audience. And that's sort of rare for Zach. Usually he's thrown in the back. Um, but it felt like our theater was so intimate that sort of plopping you right in the middle made sense. Um, but I'm sure that also uh, you also confronted your own challenges with that as well, I'm sure. Um, what was what was that like? And was there anything about like being able to watch the show every night from that vantage point? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, it's so weird because I couldn't, I can't imagine now playing Zach any other way where I would just be in the back, like smoking, a, like taking a break. It would just feel yeah. so weird. It's certainly because, I mean, it's live theater and it was such a great cast. So it really was different every night and we had different people go on. So it was always a different performance and it changed it nightly. So it was such a joy and I loved it, I think, especially in rehearsals, being able to sit there because I really got to absorb it all so much. And then night after night. And then, of course, you're in the audience and you're faced with a whole new set of challenges of people around you and candy and all that stuff. So it becomes like a whole new layer of things. Um, but I loved I loved that aspect of it. It was so comforting in a way. It was also it was like a such a great moment for me as an actor <clears throat> to really become settled. I mean, you're like shot out of a cannon for that opening number. And then I really just got to like sit and like take control of everyone. And like, that was so, that was so, so wonderful and pleasant and gratifying as an actor. Okay. I have a question for you, Matt. Yeah. If you had to pick one character on the line that you identify the most with, who would it be? As me, Matt Rich? Yeah. Oh my God. God. Probably Greg. Yes. Like I'm like a Greg, Sheila, that's a lot of Leo. That's like a lot of energy, but yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like there was one summer I played Greg and I really just like came into my own, but I think I was also younger and like coming into my own sexuality. So like that to me, like always stands out of my mind. Mm. But like, it's like a, it's like a sex of the city. I'm like a Carrie rising with the Miranda, you know, I feel like there's so much of that on the line. It's like, yeah, there's so much of each character that I identify with. Not really Connie, none of Connie. <laughs> but like Sheila, a little bit of Val. Love it. What about you, Emily? I, you know, I've just been thinking about this while you asked because I knew you were going to come to me. And I was like, I, I feel like there's bits and pieces of what I love about the line is that it kind of is its own amoeba like person mm -hmm. with all these different facets. And so um, I feel like I could pick multiple and like that would be, you know, true. I, I, part of me like, one of my favorite parts of the show is watching Bobby's um, monologue. Yeah. Um, because I identify with this like bizarre imagina imagination and creativity and just like, uh, because he feels like such an isolated character <laughs> who like just is using his imagination to like, yeah. I don't know, be his own person regardless of whoever is around. And um, so I, I, I identify with him and I just love that part of the play. Um, I wish I identified more, I mean, as a person, I, I like love and admire Cassie, but I I don't know if I identify with her 100%. Interesting, interesting. interesting. Well, Matt and Emily, we're gonna come back to you in a little bit with more uh, questions from our audience. Um, but right now, uh, what is next? Let me take a little look at my notes. Oh yes. So the next thing that we have is each week we have a special message from our an important signature family member, whether it be a staff member, a board member, somebody from our audiences. Uh, we want to give them a chance to share a special message with you. So here is a message from our board chair, Dottie Bennett. Hi, I'm Dottie Bennett, board chair of Signature Theater. Tonight's discussion with Matt Gardner is about a chorus line the hit show Signature put on this year, and one of my all-time favorites. I love it so much because it's a brutally honest portrait of dancers who declare their desperation for the opportunity to be on a chorus line. It's so humane, the music is amazing, the choreography is what really makes it. Um, I also have this wonderful opportunity to thank all of you, our supporters, for being behind Signature 
and always being there when we need you. We thank you from the bottom of our heart for making Signature such an important part of your life. And to you, our supporters, thank you. Thanks so much, Dottie. So now we are going to play a game of Chorus Line Trivia. And to do so, I want to introduce you to three cast members, Corinne Munch, Elise Kowalik, and Phil Young. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. How are you? Oh, and thank you guys for joining us. Of course. Bill, Bill, do you miss me? How could I not? <laughs> Walking to Woodley Park now. How does See how does the about. apartment that you're currently quarantined in like contain all your energy? Well, they have reinforced walls and a unicorn barricade. So <laughs> we're fine. Like the rainbow's going strong and it just bounces right back and hits me. So Perfect. exactly. Perfect. So I'm going between cake. Not speaking words, but going between states of consciousness, obviously. Amazing. <laughs> Elise, you, you you look wonderful and you've been busy. You you put out this video with you and Robin dancing a very like classic Hollywood dance in your own quarantine spaces. It's on by yes. lovely. I know it's been shared so many times. You just talked to me over literally like this FaceTime and then I went outside, did it, and he masterfully edited it together. So it was great. Amazing. <laughs> And Corinne, the world wants to know if you've been working on your solo cabaret act that you keep promising to bring to Signature, much yeah. about everything, yeah? Yes, yeah. I'm using this as a, an artistic sabbatical, if you will, and I know that <laughs> what you do about everything is just gonna take the world by storm when, when the world's ready, Amazing. which will hopefully at the, at, the, at the end of this. Amazing. So I invited you all here tonight to play a little game with me. Um, it's basically this is how it's gonna go. We have a bunch of chorus line trivia. It's really fascinating. And uh, several other members of the cast are gonna be asking you questions. Uh, there'll be three multiple choice answers. If you think you have the answer, raise your hand. And uh, the person who doesn't get it right has to drink. Or the two people who don't get it right have to drink. Does that sound like a or good thing? Or three people. Or I, can, I can do that. I can, I can lose well. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. All right. <laughs> Question number one. Oh, hey, didn't see you there. But hey, since you're here, quick question. A chorus line began when a group of Broadway dancers got together one evening. Whose idea was it for the initial meeting? A, Michael Bennett and Donna McKechnie? B, Tony Stevens and Michonne Peacock? Or C, Joe Papp and Mitzi Hamilton? Yeah, Elise. Tommy and Michonne. Ta uh, Tony and Michonne. Oh, it's <laughs> Tony and Michonne. <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, Phil and Corinne have to drink. So Tony awesome. and Michonne were veteran dancers who wanted to start a resident company of dancers. And they pulled together this whole group and they also invited Michael Bennett, which is a recipe for disaster when you invite, invite a director and choreographer in the room because he very quickly took over. Yeah, all right. Wait, can I, can I say like one 15 second thing? Yeah, do go for so, it. I don't know how true this tea is or not, but no. apparently Michael Bennett try to act after like the success after it opened in 75 as if the idea was his yeah and members of the cast tried to sue him i don't know if that's realty or like just like drama for the sake of it partly true partly true he like sold their or he wrote a contract with them uh to sell their stories each for one dollar that's a little bit of um messed up chorus line trivia for you so here is question number two Hey guys! Okay, so the question is, Donna McKechnie's stories at the first meeting inspired which of the following characters? A, BB, B, Cassie, or C, Maggie? Yes. Maggie. Maggie. Yes. Correct. That is correct. Ma um, see, you know, you know something. The story Maggie tells in At the Ballet is actually based on Donna's childhood. Okay, question number three. Michael Bennett had this good friend come in during previews and secretly punched up the jokes. Was it A, Jerry Lewis, B, Neil Simon, or C, Mel Brooks? Phil. Yeah. <laughs> no, B. It is B, yes. Oh. All right, Corinne and Elise, you have to break. So, oh, story. Dude. Michael was good friends with Neil Simon, so he invited him to a preview and asked him to help with some of the jokes. Neil Simon helped with the jokes, and then he got no credit for it. 
So, you know, <laughs> Bennett is doing great. All right, <laughs> question number four. Hey, everybody. My name is Ben Gunderson. I played Bobby in A Chorus Line. And my question for trivia is this. Lyricist Ed Kleban famously hated which of the following songs from the show? A, nothing. B, dance 10 looks three. Or C, what I did for love. Good luck. All right. Oh, go for it, Corinne. I'm just going to guess no nothing. Mm, wrong. Mm. The drink. Elise. Dance 10 looks three. Uh, wrong. Mm. Yeah, Phil. What I did for love. Correct. Thank you. Edward Evan hated the song so much that he put a ban on it being played at his funeral. That's <laughs> he hated what I did for love. There you go. Wow. All right. Final question. Question number five. Hi, guys. Which of these actors has not played Zach in a chorus line? A, film star Antonio Banderas. B, Safe by the Bell star Mario Lopez. Or C, Broadway choreographer Andy Blankenbuehler. Yes, yeah, correct. Andy Blankenbuehler. Andy Blankenbuehler, as far as I know, unless it's a high school <laughs> production, has not played Zach in a court. I'm sure he would be great. Nailed yeah. it. So I don't know who the winner is because I wasn't keeping track. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Lupone. Robert Lupo, yes. Michael Bennett. Michael Bennett is the drinking word of the night, so Michael Bennett. Okay. So thanks, you guys, so much for playing this. It's wonderful mm -hmm. your beautiful faces. And you knew, you knew so much of that. So it's great to see you all. We are going to now share a clip with you from the show. Um, while, while this video is playing, if you have any other questions for Dennis Jones, Matthew Reich, or Emily Tyra, keep them coming in. And here is a clip of Trevor Michael Schmidt performing I Can Do That. I'm watching Cisco Pitter Pat said I can do that. I can do that. Knew every step right off the bat. Said I can do that. I can do that. One morning she swung go to dance class. Shoes and tights and all But my foot's too small So I stuff her shoes with extra socks Run seven blocks In nothing flat Awesome. So we have uh, Matt and Dennis and Emily back for a final round of your questions. Uh, the first question is going to be for Dennis, and this is from Michelle Carter, who is also in the show. Uh, Dennis, tell us about how you made your transition from performer to choreographer. Uh, well, I, um, uh, you know, I did a, a number of Broadway shows as a performer, and uh, I started dance captaining them. Um, the I was with the in the original company of the revival of Chicago on Broadway, which is still running. And uh, very early into the run, they asked me if I wanted to dance captain. And I, you know, had some awareness of what a dance captain was, but I'd never done it before. So I was like, sure. Um, and I think that that was the first time I got sort of a, 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 just a better understanding of how a show functions, not just how I functioned in it, but how it functions uh, as a whole and how a dance captain in the same way that a stage manager or like anybody that maintains a show um, is kind of like involved in the the maintenance of it. And I think that that I think that was kind of like step one towards becoming a choreographer. I just started to look at it kind of from the outside and, and, and see it in sort of a larger way. Then I became the associate 
to Jerry Mitchell, who I'm sure you know, and uh, did a couple of Broadway shows with him, one featuring uh, uh, one Mad Rish, um, Legally Bond. Uh, and I did a bunch of projects with Jerry as his associate. And uh, that also like f f kind of got me more excited about being on the other side of things and um, understanding you know, how, how shows work on the other side of the footlights. Uh, but at a certain point, I, I just didn't want to be the associate anymore. I wanted to kind of do my own thing, yeah. um, which was uh, like 12 years ago, probably. And that's when I, I started to, uh, to choreograph. And um, that was kind of the moment also where I was like, I don't think I want to perform anymore either. I want to just uh, I, I'm going to focus on this one thing, you know, uh, you know, creating dance for theater. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. This, this okay. next question is for me, but I think it could uh, actually go to Emily as well. And that is from Tommy. He says, you had a new costume for pretty much every character for this production. What made you stick with Cassie's original dress? So that's interesting. So um, I'll start. Uh, Sarah Cubbage and I, you know, we, we went around and around. We looked at every possible color. And, and originally we started with the question of like, well, why is she in red? If she wants to be a part of the line, why is she standing out in that way? And ultimately we kept getting sucked back to the red. And I think not, we ended up with a red that wasn't maybe as fire engine red as uh, especially recent productions of the show have been. But there was something to me about, more for me about the way that Zach is viewing the line and there always being this person on the line that was pulling more focus than everybody else. And, and there is no more dominant color than red. So to have her in that lineup of people and have red sort of pulling both the audience's eye and Zach's eye to her made sense to me. You Anything else about that? Emily, talk, we talked about it for a while. Emily was in the beginning was like, Put me in ivory, put me in. <laughs> I, have, I was like open to anything, I really. But at the end of the day, the way that Matt directed it, you know, with with Matt, with our Zach in the, in the house, um, it's very much POV from Zach. And so you have to look at the line the way that Zach sees the line. And I think that that was how we came to the answer um, that it had to be that. And um, yeah, I mean, Took, took some of the like the weight off my shoulders of like having to stand out with just my skills. I got to wear red so like, <laughs> you know, to crank it up all the way to okay. whatever level. Yeah. So uh, one more question for Emily and Matt. This is from Eric Matthew Colton. He says, and actually this could be for Dennis too. What do you all miss most about Shirley Vegas? As we affectionately call it, Shirlington Village. Emily, anything? I mean, I just did my taxes and I spent more money at Busboys than <laughs> at <night. laughs> It's very expensive. I, yeah. I love Busboy. I miss the little, I love the little town there. You know, Matt, Matt Rich and I both live in like these big metropolitan areas. So it was so nice to kind of walk out the door and like have everything be right there. I love, my commute was incredible. Yes. For I, I loved buying like a box of cereal for like one ninety nine, because <laughs> now it's like five ninety nine, and I'm just about it. it was a hard transition coming back to these prices. Yeah, um, I love Guapos. I love the chicken salad sandwich at Best Buns. Oh, Best Buns. Yeah. That's it. That, that was mine. There you go. Yeah, all right. So, like my last question for you all is: What do you love about this show? Like, what is it about a chorus line that is so special for each of you? You want me to start? Yeah, go for it, Emily. I feel like a chorus line is so, so special because it's, there's not a, you can't see, I always say, I would come out of the stage door and whoever I knew that was in the audience would be there waiting and whatever. And they'd be like, oh my God, I, you made me cry. And I'd be like, of course we did. We made you cry because if you, if you didn't cry or you didn't feel something, you're dead inside. Like this show speaks to everybody. And there is there's always somebody on the line that you can relate to as an audience member. And I think that is so unique and special, um, you know, regardless of the, the dancing and the music and all of that stuff that makes it what it is. There's just all of these incredible um, multifaceted human being characters on stage that 
are so compelling to watch and listen to for, you know, in its, its little two hour uh, entirety. That's my, my take. I think it's so crazy to think about Chorus Line as like, it's really just about the psychology of performers in a way. And like that the fact that they built this huge Broadway stage musical that is one of the best musicals ever written. And it's really just about that. And it just takes place in real time in this one room. It's like so incredible to me that something so simple can be so complicated and so extravagant and so entertaining and so uplifting and so heartbreaking. Like, it's just like, yeah. The work that went into creating that, I mean, it really just shows you. It's like if you if you just, you know, have a great idea and work hard on it and are good at what you do, I mean, you can really come up with something special. Yeah. What about you, Dennis? Well, I mean, I could I could I could dance all night. Like I could talk about this until the cows come home. But um, but you know something that I have been thinking about a lot. Um, uh, you know, being in the in the rehearsal studio and hearing what I did for love. Sam, who like delivered it in such an incredibly beautiful and heartfelt and like uh, meaningful way. Um, and the first time she sang it in the room, everybody cried, I cried. And the second time she sang it in the room, everybody cried and I cried and I kept crying. And then at a certain point you start to not cry. You know what I mean? At a certain point you're like, oh, I'm doing my job and we're doing the show and stuff. And now I'm, now I'm, I'm, I've moved past that. You get into the theater, she does it again. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm crying again. I mean, it's a song that has like such a, uh, it's like a comforting song and yet a kind of a brutal song. It's like deeply truthful and, and yet kind of unsettling for anyone in this business. And, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an amazing piece of writing that was delivered in such an incredible way. Um, but then I hit a point in the theater where I was like, okay, I'm done crying, I'm done crying with that. You all posted that video. This was a few weeks ago, Signature did with that. And it may be in part the just kind of precarious existence that we're all sort of dealing with right now. Um, but guess what? The tears, yeah. they came right on back. Yeah, crying again. It's brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I want to thank the three of you for being here tonight, Matt and Dennis and Emily. Thank you so much for joining us. And to the amazing cast of A Chorus Line, we love you all. Um, so next week's episode is going to be a reunion of the original four guests on our Sig Strong live show. It's Tracy Lynn Oliveira, Bobby Smith, Maria Rizzo, and Nova Payton alongside Eric Schaefer. Uh, they have a completely different show mapped out for you next week, and they have a special guest in Washington Post theater critic Peter Marks. So definitely check that out next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. And until then, stay inside and stay safe. Thank you all. Singular sensation. Let's do the whole combination facing away from the mirror. From the top, a five, six, seven, eight.
five, six, seven, eight.